Exposed. Written by Susanna Thompson. Narrated by Lauren Sweet. Chapter 7 I made an unavoidable entrance into my first class, what with being so late and appearing in my hot pink bridesmaid dress. Seeing what I was wearing made the teacher grin, but nobody laughed at me. Those who had seen me in the hallway earlier had apparently already told the others about it. You and Mason? The girl next to me whispered, shortly after I took my seat. I was going to deny it, but then I remembered that it was the story we'd told the principal. I was still paranoid enough not to risk conflicting stories getting back to Mr. Delaney. If he became suspicious and decided to call my dad about this... Putting on a fake smile, I nodded my head in answer to the girl's question. She immediately turned away from me to whisper to the girl on the other side of her. I sighed to myself, knowing that she was passing on my acknowledgement of Mason and I being a couple. His friend, Josh, was in this class, and he walked out with me after the bell rang. So, you and Mason, huh? Here I thought you dressed up to ask me to prom. I laughed, my spirits lifting with his light banter. I did, but Prince Charming showed up looking all desperate and pathetic. Prince Charming, Josh repeated with a rueful smile. Wow. I flushed in embarrassment, mentally kicking myself for letting my nickname for Mason slip out. It had become sarcastic rather than romantic after I actually met him, and found out how lacking in charm he was. But Josh didn't know that. Well, he said, it's a little hard to compete with that. I figured something was up when he wouldn't even let me walk you out to your car. I've never seen him so possessive over a girl. Yeah, well, I trailed off, at a loss for words to respond to that. I get now why he's been keeping guys away from you all this time. It never made sense to me before. He acted like he hated you, but he obviously wanted you for himself. I snorted out a laugh. Yeah, right. He said all those awful things about me because he wanted me. Josh gave me a quizzical look. You don't seem to like him too much. His expression changed to concern and then turned fearful before he stepped closer and glanced around. He leaned in and brought his mouth close to my ear. Is he forcing you to go out with him? I froze in fear, wondering if Josh knew about the picture, if he had seen the picture. Had Mason showed it to his friends? The thought made me sick to my stomach. Oh my God, he is, Josh said in horror, and I realized that he had pulled back to look at me. Did you see it? I asked him, the humiliation spreading through me and making my eyes prick with gathering tears. See what? He questioned in hushed and fearful anticipation of my answer. There was no indication in his eyes that he had any knowledge of what I was referring to. There was only fear and dread, like when you know something bad has happened, but you don't know what it is. What did he do? Josh asked anxiously, before leaning in to whisper in my ear again. Did he send you someone's ear? What? I exclaimed loudly, pulling back to look at him in bewilderment. Shh. He hushed me with a paranoid glance around us. Leaning in again, he whispered, The mafia thing. You know his family is in witness protection? I burst out laughing and Josh took a startled step back from me. Oh my God, I gasped as he watched me warily. Witness protection, that is too funny. Keep your voice down, he admonished me as people walking by gave us curious looks. This is serious. Josh, I said as I composed myself. Mason is not in witness protection. That's some bullshit story he made up. Josh shook his head and stepped closer to me again, not leaning in to whisper in my ear this time, but keeping his voice at a low volume as he spoke with an urgent look on his face. 
His mom doesn't work, but she bought him a new car when he turned 16. Mason doesn't have a job, but he always has money. Also, there were those accidents that happened to the guys who didn't stay away from you. My hackles rose at that statement. How many guys had Mason actually hurt? I only knew of the one he had given the black eye to, and I had thought that he mostly just verbally intimidated people. What accidents? Brent Selleck, freshman year. Someone broke both his legs. He said it happened skiing, but Mason told us that was the story they told him to tell, and that he was warned they'd kill him if he told anyone the truth. He even told us to go ahead and ask him and to see if he would break, but Brent stuck to his story no matter what. I rolled my eyes. Probably because it was the truth, I remarked dryly. Jason Zucker broke his arm, supposedly falling on some ice. Tommy Drake said he broke his ankle skateboarding, but yeah, I deadpanned. Because nobody ever gets hurt while skateboarding. Then there was Chase the next year, Josh said somberly. Mason was even friends with him, but when he slept with you, Mason said that he, that Chase was, he used that to, I sputtered in outrage. They made it look like a suicide, Josh said in a hushed and sorrowful tone. I'm going to kill that lying asshole, I exploded. No, Josh exclaimed in alarm. Don't tell him I told you anything. The bell rang just as I was yelling that Mason wasn't part of the fucking mafia and I stormed off to my next class, arriving late again and breathing fire when I saw Mason. He quirked an eyebrow when he saw my expression, but I was forced to hold in my fury during class instead of gouging out his eyes like I wanted to. The teacher made it especially hard when she commented on us. Miss Chase, Mr. Sumner, that's very cute. Taking that as a cue, the girl sitting beside Mason stood up. You can sit here, she offered. No, I protested, but she was already moving to the only empty seat in the room. Sit down, please, the teacher told me. I trust that you and your boyfriend will refrain from disrupting my class any further. We'll behave, Mason promised her. Glaring at him, I swallowed down my retort that he wasn't my boyfriend and stiffly sat down next to him at the two-person table. Ignoring him and staring straight ahead at the teacher as she talked to the class, I didn't hear a word she said as I silently fumed. Of all the rotten things that Mason had done, this was the worst. Using the tragedy of Chase's death to enhance some stupid story of being connected to the Mafia was a low that I hadn't expected even from him. He nudged me, and I turned toward him with a snarl. Fuck off. His brows drew together. Class is over. You didn't hear the bell ring? Glancing around, I saw that the tables around us were empty, and our classmates were filing out the door. Scraping my chair against the floor, I sprang up and grabbed my purse. Mason was right behind me as I left the room, and I spun around to confront him in the hallway. What's your problem? He demanded first. My problem? What the hell is your problem, Mason? How could you use someone's- I shook my head. You know what? You're not even worth me wasting my breath talking to you. I started to turn on my heel, but he grabbed my arm and spun me in the other direction. Ignoring my protests, he pulled me around the corner and into the empty cafeteria. He finally let go of me, but stood glowering in front of me. Tell me what you're so pissed off about. Chase, I spat out angrily at him. Your supposed friend? Great friend you turned out to be. Instead of mourning him, you told everybody some bullshit story about how you killed him. Pain replaced the anger on his face. All tragedy by time is kept. Don't do that shit, I yelled. Don't act like you give a shit when you used his death for your own. I do care, he yelled back. Chase shouldn't have done that. Why did he do that? He had everything going for him. Football, popularity, 
Why would someone like that kill himself? Why? I shook my head. I don't know. Was it because of that girl? I stiffened. Don't you dare try to blame Alice. I can't see any other reason why he would do it, Mason argued. She loved him, I shouted. It broke her heart when he died. She mourned him, which is more than I can say for you. What kind of friend uses someone's death for his own personal benefit? I did it for him too, he insisted. What sounds cooler, committing suicide or having a hit put on you by the mafia? I gaped at him speechlessly. Chase would have loved it, he said with a sad smile. You're demented, I told him, but my voice didn't have the same bite as before. Completely, he agreed. That's why everyone is afraid of me. I'm not afraid of you. His silver gray eyes locked on me. Prove it, he challenged in a seductive tone. Did you really delete my picture? I asked as I gazed at him. Yes, he said, but I didn't want to. I wanted to keep it and look at it every minute because I've never seen anything so fucking hot in my life. Heat engulfed my body like a fever. Those words spoken in that tone while he held my gaze with those incredible eyes. Do you know how hard it was not to touch you when you were begging me to? He asked as he leaned in and brought his mouth a hair's breadth from mine. How hard it gets me just thinking about it even now. I was so caught up in him and so turned on by his dirty talk, something I never thought I'd like, that I couldn't wait for him to kiss me. So I kissed him. He made a sound low in his throat and coaxed me past his lips into an exploration of his mouth that made me delirious with desire. The sensual feel of his tongue tangling with mine was beyond anything I had imagined kissing would be. I very reluctantly pulled away from him when the bell rang, not caring that I was going to be late to yet another class. In the next instant, I stopped resisting the magnetic pull of his mouth and kissed him again. He kissed me back hungrily before pulling away with a groan. I told you I wouldn't be able to stop if I kissed you. I was struck by the familiarity of those words, and then it dawned on me where I had heard them. My dream. That really happened, I realized. The night I got drunk, begging you, I repeated, the words embarrassing me now. Oh, God, I said, retreating from Mason as my cheeks flamed. No, Ella, that was hot, he assured me, but I wasn't comforted. I'm late, I threw out, and sprinted around a table and out the door in my haste to escape my embarrassment. It was only when I was sitting in class without Mason around that the realization that I had kissed him sank in. I had kissed him for real, instead of only in my dreams and I really couldn't believe my life right now.